everyone today we're going to be installing this power supply uh, some of the comments on one of my other videos mentioned maybe using a power supply instead of trying to use a, a battery and uh, keeping it maintained while charging it and also using it for here so I bought this thing it was less than $19 I'll leave a link in the description for that below but let's talk about some of the things we can do with one of these so what's necessary in this video, I'm going to be powering up all of these lights and also the fan. I'm going to click, take that screen off and clean it. And then one final thing will be, we're going to power up the pump that goes to the water system with this just one power supply. We're going to be using the parts seen here and I got some terminal connectors. This is just a, a donor from an old computer. Uh, you can get these on Amazon from between two and ten bucks. Uh, the most expensive one that I looked at, you know, for this project, we only need about three amp power supply, so it doesn't have to be, you know, heavy duty. Uh, the most expensive one that I looked at was around eight dollars and something, twelve feet. I'll leave a, a link in the description below for that. This is from Harbor Freight. Got a bunch of terminal connectors, and this is going to be uh, to connect the twelve. 12 volts power supply we'll be using this for the 110 I'm gonna be hooking it up here but I'm not going to show this part but I will be uh, taking the knockout out and uh, installing it from the side not quite sure where to hang this thing but as you can see here it's got some ventilation in the back so I'm gonna to want to raise this up and mount it so that you know it can get some good airflow airflow it does have a temperature sensitive fan so when this thing gets hot it will turn on and keep it cool now I, I tried to see if this was steel in any way shape or form so this is definitely a metal case it won't stick to that magnet at any rate we will be showing this thing working we'll just be leaving it here you know as a temporary uh, install to check it out uh, first thing we're going to do is cut this cord and attach some terminals and if you're not quite sure how to read this, L, that's line, that's the actual voltage on the uh, 110. That's going to that's gonna be a black wire. And as for neutral, it'll be here. That's your white wire, and this is a ground symbol. This will have your green wire. Now a little trick, if you're using a, a two-wire cord, if you hook this and this together, it would provide a ground for this metal case, and we definitely want this metal case grounded, you know, should anything occur. I've already slipped, flipped the switch over to 110. This can go 110 or 220. You know, if you wanted to wire this up 220, you could. Um, but if you were to do the little cheat that I suggested from here to here, if you hook this up to a GFI, it will trip it. Now, inside of your panel box, the neutral and the ground, they are bonded together. So anyway, we've got a V minus and a V plus, so that we're gonna have a, our uh, positive for the battery here and our negative for the battery there on that V minus and this ADJ that's just an adjustment you can adjust the voltage right here you need a small Phillips screwdriver I'm not sure the lighting is going to pick up and give that any justice we're using some uh, exterior lighting right now through this screen but let's go ahead and get this thing started all right, so I opened it up and I found pretty small wires and I looked on the side of the cable it said 18 gauge. 18 gauge is good for 7 amps, so we're still good. All right, so we got our black, green, and white. I'm going to go ahead and wire them up on this. All right, so we got this hooked up the way they've described right here. Line, neutral, and ground. All right, so I just plugged it in and I wanted to see what the factory preset voltage was it looks like it's 12.2 volts now, I don't recommend doing this live uh, with a metal screwdriver but I got insulated handle so it should be okay and I'm just gonna slowly turn this and I'd like to get it up to 13.8 volts There we go. All right, so we have it set for 13.8 volts, and now I'm gonna hook this up, and like I said before, 
I'm going to hook this up temporarily to this switch and I'm going to open that switch up for this instance instead of knocking all that out and I just want to see how the loads will affect um, this power supply. Alright, let's test it. Alright, so I've got this hooked up temporarily. Again, I'm going to do finish the work without you all, but I've got 13.8 here and it says 14 volts there. I'm guessing this is the more accurate one because when I read it with the meter it says 13.8. Um, but 0.2 volts isn't terrible. Alright, so quick tip, you are not allowed to have 12 volt and 110 in the same box. Uh, say for instance you had two light switches, you can't have 12 volt light switch and a 110 light switch in the same box, they have to be in separate boxes. Alright, so, and again, the only reason I'm, I've got this out, this is temporary, I'm going to stub off of it like I did here with the MT and create, uh, raise this up so it has good airflow in the back and good ventilation. But let's give it a test. Alright, so turn on the lights. Alright, we lost 0.2 volts here, but it doesn't say any change there. Actually, looks like the machine has stepped it up just a little bit, trying to compensate for voltage loss. And we've got good lighting. Probably could go ahead and close the door now. Alright, so we are powering all of these. There's 16 of them. And let's go ahead and kick on the water. This switch right here. Still 13.8. This one still says 13.9, but we haven't had the water on, so let's kick that on. I've got a a uh, pressure tank on this, so that doesn't run all the time all right so we lost one tenth of a volt here and this one says it's jumped up so it's trying to compensate maybe we can catch that with it still on turn this up another airplane open this up all the way this one consumes around two amps Alright, we say 13.8 here, 13.9, this thing is compensating beautifully. One final test, I'm going to turn that water in again, I'll just let it run. The reason the water doesn't kick on right away, if I, I've installed a pressure tank, um, it allows the water to not pulsate from the pump, it'll fill this up. Alright, 13.9, 13.7, it's not hot at all, this thing is awesome. Alright, I'm going to turn the water off, so it's not so noisy. Alright, again, this thing was less than $19, I'm going to leave a link in the description below if you want to check it out. Uh, appreciate you watching the videos. Hopefully we'll get to our generator video soon. We're going to be running a generator off of propane. You hear it still running over there? <laughs> it's from this pressure tank. If you have any other video ideas you want me to check out or any questions, just leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. See you. Alright, bonus material. So, what if you have a battery system and a power supply what you could do there the easiest solution would just to be have a switch switch it on either to the battery you switch it the other way and it would give power from the power supply but if you wanted it to be hands-free if you want it to be automatic so if you actually turn the charger on and then you forgot it you can use a diode so you would want to put your charger on the battery and come off of the charger, off the battery, and insert a diode. Now this is a 15 amp diode, so my system would need two of these. I've got uh, 18 amps of electronics here, 
so 15 amps should give me pretty good leeway so I would need two of these and the way you set them up you see it's got a gray at one end it's not easy to see even off the camera so this would flow from here to here this is the direction it's got a really light gray cap the direction flows here so we're coming off the battery this direction and power can't go back the other way now I've got this power supply plugged in but the power supply can't charge the battery and the battery if it was really dead would pull too many amps for that power supply probably burn it up so we would need two of these here and the other thing I would probably do is put one coming off of here closer to that switch another two of them and in that case the current would flow that way so both of these systems would be isolated and let me just show you how they're isolated using the meter all right so we have our battery charger when we put it right here it's 14.1 I'm gonna zoom in on that meter there all right so we have 14.1 on the battery and you remember our power supply we was testing it just just a while ago 13.8 so this power supply and this battery is somewhat isolated I would imagine the power supplies is trying to be back fed from this battery charger so again what I want to do and let me do that real quick All right so here's a, an example coming from the 110 power supply that converts to 12 volts it's coming this direction to the lights see the gray over here so this can only flow this way the gray points the direction of flow all right all right so here is where the magic happens we have them both isolated we've got a double diode here to give us 30 amps and it's going straight to the light this battery obviously would not be sitting here it would go underneath and it would also have a double diode our battery voltage is 14.1 and it's still being charged but on this side of the charger uh, 13.7 and that's coming off coming off of our power supply here all right so what will happen this thing will eventually stop charging I'm gonna unplug that right now So we have no charge coming to it. I got a meter on it right now. 13.4 and coming off of our power supply. 13.9, 13.8. Alright, so what that means, this battery is not being drawn upon. Since the power supply has the higher voltage, it's going to have all the voltage taken first and then later on the battery so when this thing gets done charging and it's in a trickle state then the battery will not be drawn upon now let's say you leave home and at this point we don't even have to plug this in so you leave home and your power's gone and so the only thing we have hooked up now is the battery we don't have a battery charger we don't have our power supply but we still have lights now at this point it doesn't matter you've only got the battery so if you plugged in your battery charger without 110 it's not going to charge it anyway but as soon as you hit short power and you plug it in I don't know if you notice these lights are a lot brighter everything is now being drawn off of this power supply instead of the battery so let's check that out real quick 13.1 on the battery 13.8 on the power supply so when we start charging the power is going to go up 
it recognizes 131 also. So it's saying it's putting out a charge, so I'm gonna put that right on the clamp. No, it's pulling too much. The battery's pulling the voltage down. It says it's kicking out 141, but when it hits the leads, it just takes it all. But we've got 13.4 here at the top of this post, and we still have 13.8 coming from the power supply. So this battery charger is not having to supply charge and supply uh, the lights, fan, motor pumps, all of that. So we have now totally isolated this. Again, we would put this underneath, we'd put a double diode there in the direction that I showed. And we've got our double diode here. So we're all set. We wouldn't have this, you know, the, the, all the wires are underneath for the batteries and they are already there. This is just there to, uh, to demonstrate it up close. All right, hope this helps. If it's as clear as mud, drop me a comment. I'll try to help you in any way, shape, or form. Thanks for watching. See you.